The story begins with a moving truck arriving at a house. We see a woman named Lucia giving a prayer to a photo of an elderly woman who is likely her relative. In the kitchen of the same house, a man is preparing breakfast for his family. He is Marcos, talking on the phone with his friend. He complains about how he got a ticket for parking a fire truck near a fire hydrant. Soon Lucia approaches him, and they greet each other in Spanish. When the family sits at the table, we see the son Alex, wearing a suit. We learn the boy has received a confirmation somewhere, an achievement his father is proud of. Alex's sister Alicia says she can confirm Alex right now by saying he has a crush on a girl named Leah Abram. This causes the boy to playfully wave a spoon at his younger sister, while saying she is absolved from her sins. Alicia mimics the action on her father and accidentally spills juice on the table. For her mistake, Alex is the one who gets sent to the garage to retrieve another carton of juice. In there, the atmosphere is completely different from the one in the kitchen. As he picks up the carton of juice, we see something that looks like a rat run by in the ventilation shaft. It gets him to shine his phone light in there, and the doors to a big cabinet open, so he looks at it. After taking a key that was taped to the inside of one of the doors, Alex uses it to open a part of the cabinet. He takes out a small box from there. Shaking it tells him something is inside. Once his dad joins him, he says they are late. Alex shares his discovery with him, saying there is no way to open the box because it is smooth all over. Marcos wants him to have it as a gift for his confirmation. When the family leaves the house, our attention is brought to the mysterious box. It sits beside a flickering lamp, showing us that something isn't quite right with the box. The lamp doesn't seem to be flickering due to a faulty wall switch or a poor light bulb. The next scene has Alex sitting in a confession booth, confessing his sins. He has had unclean thoughts about a girl. The priest Cutler tells him it's normal and nothing to be ashamed of. He also wants to hear more about her, so Alex starts telling him. Cutler advises the boy to ask her out on a date. This prompts Alex to say he thought priests could not date, but Cutler says Alex isn't a priest yet. The man wants Alex to know what he's giving up. He almost got married before he took his vows. Later, we see Alex wearing a red robe in the chapel. He seems to get accepted by a senior priest into his future priesthood. There is a boy there who seems to disregard the holy surroundings by casually giving the bird to Alex, right there in the church. Back at home, Marcos observes the mysterious box in his workshop with his son. He says whoever made it is a real craftsman. After observing there are no seams on it, he shakes the box to hear what Alex heard earlier. Whatever is in there was sealed from the inside, he says. Thus their curiosity leads them into deciding to cut the box to see what it is. As Marcos applies the box to his stationary electric saw, they soon witness how resilient the box is. The saw shakes and the light flickers. However, the box does get destroyed. With its destruction, the light goes out and an ominous sound is heard. This proves that they made a mistake. Dozens of wood shards lie on the ground, and Alex picks up a crucifix among them. Looking at it, the boy wonders who it belongs to. He also wonders why someone would hide it in a box. Later, Alex turns the cross into a necklace and puts it on. He looks out the window shortly after to see someone outside. It is the boy from the church Everett. He shouts to Alex that they should go and calls him Father Flanagan. Then we see three of them walking together while Everett films it. The other boy with them is Gavin. Talking to the camera, Everett says they are drawing near the home of 16-year-old Leah Abrams. The other two don't want to engage in this activity, but Everett is a hooligan who does. Eventually, he records the girl through her window, and she is partially undressed. When Leah catches them, Alex attempts to tell her he tried to stop Everett. Although she expected such behavior from the hooligan, she did not from Alex. In the next scene, Leah calls Alex to ask if the video got deleted. After he confirms it did, he asks what she is doing on Saturday night. The girl instantly questions if he is asking her out on a date because she thought they were merely friends. Regardless of what they are, she agrees to pick him up at 7. When he gets ready for bed at night, his door opens. Alex doesn't notice it until he turns his lamp off, so he stands up to close it. Outside, we observe a street lamp flickering. Further into the night, Alex sees the door open again, which makes him close it a second time. Now he watches the street lamp flicker and sees someone appear beside it. The moment the person vanishes, the lamp returns to proper order. The next thing we see is Alex vomiting. Following this, Alex is with Cutler as both of them stand near a woman who lies in bed. Due to her saying something in Spanish, Cutler has to look at Alex for a translation. Alex tells the priest that the woman wants to know if she's going to heaven. The man wants the future priest to tell her to trust in God, for he always looks out for his children. Therefore, Alex comforts her with those words. 
But upon Cutler holding her hand, the woman soon gives a very troubled look. Her heart rate starts going up and quickly stops. At home, Lucia walks in on her son swearing. She notices the cross around his neck, prompting her to ask where he got it from. After he tells her, she informs him the cross belonged to his grandfather. Later, Alex looks through old items in a box. Looking at the photos, he finds one with an elderly man wearing the same cross as a necklace. A child is beside him who could be Alex, which would mean the man is his grandfather. In their bedroom, Lucia tells Marcos she can't believe he allowed Alex to have the cross. We learn her dad was a carpenter, so it was likely he who sealed the crucifix in the box. The woman worries that every time she looks at the cross, she will be reminded of what happened. The occurrence she has in mind is currently a mystery to us. This is the reason Lucia isn't comfortable with Alex having it. Marcos tells her if he takes the crucifix away, their son will ask why. Since she is very angry with her husband, he gets on his knees to say, she should know what could happen if Alex starts to ask questions. He might remember what her dad did to the boy. This makes the upset wife agree to let Alex keep it for now. Afterward, the boy places the photo of him with his grandfather on his wall. He frames it too. While he's saying a prayer on his bed, the photo falls. He comes to pick it up and sees the glass has shattered. Oddly, he simply puts it back on the wall. This is followed by him hearing a scary sound outside. Looking out the window, he sees nothing there, but hears a door move. When he lies down in his bed, he observes the closet door is open again. Yet once he turns on the light, the door is surprisingly closed. Alex doesn't do anything about this strangeness. While everyone sleeps, the street lamp goes out. Alex's door opens, and we think something evil is entering his room. However, it is just Marcos checking on his son. The moment he turns off the light, we observe a very odd figure standing in the closet, being barely visible. Soon frightening sounds start to fill the room, giving Alex a troubled sleep. He wakes up and sees the figure in the closet. Turning on the light makes it disappear. Thus he takes his lamp and slowly walks to the closet with it. The problem is that its cord disconnects from the socket, bringing darkness back. The monster returns with it, frightening the boy by yelling to him that God is a liar. Alex's parents rush in because of his screams. He tells them someone was in there. He also says what the monster told him. Alicia thinks it may have been a nightmare, but Alex gets mad and says it wasn't. The boy even uses profanity, knowing it's not very priestly to do so. On another day, Alex is outside with his friends while they drink beer. Everett wants to get a harlot for Alex on the latter's birthday. He advises his friend to have a lot of unholy fun before he can't do it anymore. Alex thinks it might not be a big deal to give it up. Those words cause Gavin to ask him how he knows when he has no idea what he's giving up. His friends think Alex's decision to become a priest is weird. His reason to be one is that he wants to help people. Everett says there are countless ways to do that and still not give up the intimate act. Out of nowhere, Alex asks them if they believe in ghosts. Gavin makes a joke of this question by telling his friend he might want to put his beer down. When Alex is serious, his friend Milo says he believes in them. He thinks he saw one after his dad passed away. Alex chooses not to disclose what he recently experienced in his room. Later, we see him with Leah on their date. They sit in a car and listen to a comedy album. She tells him most girls she knows are into bad boys. Instead of taking them out to dinner, she advises Alex to take them out for a drink. She also tells him to play something that will get them in the mood, not a comedy album. Therefore, she tunes into a song on the radio. But Alex responds to Leah's talk about other girls by saying he doesn't want anyone else. This is followed by them kissing. The girl asks if he's sure he wants to be a priest. When she kisses him again, he gets a few intrusive images. Afterward, the duo arrives near Alex's house, and Leah says they can take it slow. Plus, she wants to see him again. Once the girl drives away, the street lamp Alex stands beside starts to flicker. It is his energy the lamp seems to be responding to. The next scene has the gang of friends at a house party. Alex is relaxing while watching his friends have fun in the pool. Sinister whispers seem to haunt him as he does. Focused on Gavin with Leah, he soon sees them laugh at him. It seems to bother him more and more to see them have fun together. So he jumps into the pool to attack Gavin. Following this sudden action, he gets in a car to drive off. He drives until he hears a police siren behind him. This leads to the boy getting placed in a jail cell. Left alone in the cell, he starts to cry. The light in there flickers too. And with it, the ominous being appears. Alex pleads for it not to hurt him. But the demon puts its hand on the boy's neck. We watch Alex becoming evil due to this. Shortly after this uncanny incident, the demon disappears. Later, he drives with his parents. His father scolds him, 
saying his mistake could cost them $10,000. When Marcos insults him, Alex gets angry and yells, asking what they want from him. He also says his dad hates him because Alex is not like him. He adds that what he hates most is Alex being smarter than him. Furthermore, the boy says it's no surprise the man's father beat him. Hearing those words from his son is not something Marcos can take. Thus he stops the car to grab Alex's neck. Subsequently, Alex throws insults at his mom too. He says she abandoned her mom to let her perish alone. This prompts Marcos to slap him and demand that Alex apologize to his mother. However, all the boy does is spew profanities in a fit of rage. In the next scene, Alex occupies a therapist's office. She is Dr. Diane, informing Alex that they met long ago at the time he was five years old. His parents were worried about the scary pictures he was drawing. He tells the doctor he's been having nightmares of a voice whispering blasphemous statements to him. Since he refers to the voice as it, Diane has to write this down in her notes. When he asks what kind of scary pictures he was drawing, the scene ends on that curious note. In his room, Alex takes out a box from his closet. Under all the items contained therein, he takes out a folder that contains the drawings from his childhood. He starts looking through them, and they seem normal in the beginning. Then comes the first unsettling picture of an upset child with smiling parents. There is a wicked ghost looming over the child, causing the foul mood. After this picture, the ones that follow are of a similar gloom, never returning to the peaceful atmosphere of the first few. In a short time, Alex calls Leah, saying he wants to apologize. He wears a vile face as he talks to her, and is certainly not himself. Moving along, the boy is sitting in the car with Leah again. He starts by asking a question that confuses her, if she thinks all the people out there in the world are worth it. But he doesn't elaborate on it. Instead, he changes the topic to tell her she looks good like she always does. He apologizes a second time for acting crazy. Yet the girl is understanding of his behavior. When he says he couldn't take seeing her with Gavin, Leah says she likes how he got jealous. So they kiss and the demon tries to intervene. It makes Alex behave aggressively with her. She is forced to open the door to get him to stop. After she rudely asks what is wrong with him, Alex is just as confused as she is. Later, he is in the workshop, examining the wooden shards that contain the cross he wears. He sees writing on one of them, which gets him to place several shards together to form a message. Since the writing is in Latin, he uses the internet to translate the words into English. The message he reads is diabolical. Shortly after, Lucia enters the workshop, and her son asks if her father was a religious man. She says he became one later in life. He began to wear the crucifix Alex wears, thinking it protected him. The man had psychological problems he was never treated for. He hurt people, and religion was his way of dealing with his guilt. Alex is curious to know how he passed away, and learns his grandfather showed himself out the door. At a different time, Alex is in the confession booth. He asks Cutler if the priest believes in demons. Cutler answers that demons represent the darkest desires in humans. All people have impulses that weaken them and lead them astray. At this moment, Alex informs him he's been having certain experiences that he does not specify. The priest relates to the boy, for he had deep emotional problems upon returning from the war. They are manifestations of a deeper problem, he says. Alone in the chapel, Cutler prays for Alex. As he does, he hears voices. He proceeds to pray anyway, but soon hears the phrase that God is a liar. Puzzled, the man stands to slowly look around. On the last bench, he finds a baby covered by a coat with Cutler's name on it. So he cradles the vulnerable child. Unfortunately, horror strikes right there in the church in the form of the baby suddenly turning into a skeleton. Out of fear, Cutler drops it, and the skeleton shatters. Then he gets on his knees, screaming and suffering on the floor. Following this, Alex enters his house, where he is greeted with a birthday surprise. We learn today is the day he turned 16 years old. For some reason, his parents are proud of him for it, despite a birthday being an inevitable occurrence that one does not have to work for. When Alex comes to his friends, Leah congratulates him with a kiss. He thought they hated him for how he behaved at the party, but Gavin, the one with the biggest reason to hate him, says they can't do that because they are family. Alex has to apologize for his misbehavior again. Elsewhere in the house with his friends, we see he told them about what he is going through. He also says this evil spirit probably haunted him during his youth. Everett asks what an evil spirit wants with him. As he says it wants to possess him, the lights go out. However, it was likely done by his parents, for they come out with a birthday cake while singing the traditional birthday song. Later, Alex talks with Cutler, who tells the former that he had a cryptogenic stroke. He also tells the boy that he hallucinated during his prayer. He felt something he hadn't felt since the war. 
Alex is curious if Cutler ever heard of the phrase he translated from Latin. After Alex recites it, Cutler says it's from the Book of Enoch. He was the great-grandfather of Noah. The priest says it's not considered biblical canon. He thought they were merely cautionary stories, but now he doesn't know what to believe. The moment Cutler asks if he told anyone else about this, our attention is brought to brief instances of Alex's friends engaging in the activities they enjoy. Alex becomes worried, saying he does not want to see something. He pleads to not be made to watch it. What he ends up witnessing is all three of his friends experiencing unfortunate accidents. This gives Alex a seizure with blackened eyes. The next scene has him at the funeral. Supposedly, all his friends lost their lives in the accidents they were in. The only friend who wasn't touched is Leah. Later, Alex reads from the Bible in his room. Soon Alicia walks inside and tells him she is scared. He promises to not let anything bad happen to her. The girl says she loves him, which are words he returns to her before she leaves. Left alone, Alex hears sinister whispers. In the photo of his grandfather, he sees a shadowy figure standing behind little Alex. The boy covers his ears to try not to hear the whispers. He also says he won't hurt her, referring to Alicia. Completely defeated, Alex tries to end everything. His life has taken a nosedive that he doesn't know how to escape. Thankfully, his parents rush in to save him. An unknown amount of time passes and Alex awakens on his bed. He asks his parents why they saved him. Not finding his crucifix on him, he demands to have it. He says it's the single thing protecting him, so his mother puts it in his hand. Afterward, he tells her they are all in danger. While he lives, no one close to him is safe. Lucia wants to know what he means, but he cannot tell her. All he knows is it won't stop until it has him. Therefore, he urges her to let him perish. Alex squeezes the cross to the point of bleeding, and this makes Marcos inject him with a sedative. Subsequently, the parents talk to Dr. Diane. Lucia thinks all this chaos has something to do with what happened to her son when he was a child. We learn he was by his grandfather. The doctor thinks Alex's repressed memories are likely the cause of what is going on. According to her professional opinion, it's time for him to face those memories. We see Marcos installing a camera in his son's room. This allows us to observe him on the device as he undergoes many struggles. At one time, his dad has to wrestle him to his bed. The boy also destroys the photo of his grandfather. Following this, Alex occupies the confession booth. He informs Cutler that his therapist made him understand he has issues he will have to deal with for his whole life. The demon he was seeing never existed. It was his subconscious way of dealing with what happened to him when he was little. Holding an opposing mindset, Cutler says what they experienced was real. The priest warns Alex that if he ignores it, the demon will destroy him. When the boy starts walking away, Cutler wants him to know that in the darkest of times, it becomes hard to distinguish God from the devil. In the next scene, Alex prays in his bed. The demon watches him from inside the closet, and it looks like it is laughing. Later, the family starts watching a film made by Alicia. Leah is also with them. Alas, right at the start, the lights go out. Interestingly, Lucia notices they are the only ones who lost power. This is the moment the demon chooses to appear in the room. Seeing it, Alex urges his mother to get away from the window. Then Marcos comes into the room with a flashlight, which he shines at the demon. He becomes the second person to see it and uses his protective mentality to charge at the evil. Of course, the demon cannot be beaten with such methods. It simply uses its power to slam the man against the wall. Approaching him, his family sees he is unconscious. Soon they see Alicia descending the stairs with a knife in each hand. The demon emerges from her, prompting Lucia to run to it. Yet the demon uses its power again to push her back. It follows this by making the little girl put a knife Her brother can't handle seeing this, so he cries and yells out that he's the one the demon wants. At this point, he rips the cross off to drop it on the floor. This action seems to affect the demon and Alicia takes the knife away from herself. After she runs to Leah, Alex declares he is ready to perish. As he starts praying, the demon rises, perhaps getting ready to destroy everyone. But Alex's prayer seems heartfelt. Without the evil crucifix holding him back, his prayer destroys the demon. Fortunately, his entire family survives this unexpected attack. The penultimate scene has Cutler giving a sermon about the devil. The priest says he is real and ready to strike at any time. Then we see Alex's house at night while the family sleeps. Inside Alicia's room, the boy stands in the corner, watching her. We thought he was purified, but he wears a look that communicates dark motives. 